my name is Stacy, and I wanted to talk about my attempted suicide. Um, so in 2016, I decided to take my own life um, because I've been through a lot in my life. I was taken away from my mom at an early age. Um, I was abused while with my biological mom, both physically and sexually. I went through the foster care system. Um, I was adopted. I was sexually molested by my brother. And I started drinking. And I just kept drinking. And I, all the way up into adulthood. So I spent about 16 years drinking, being homeless, um, just struggling. Basically put a pause on life. Um, in 2016, I had already been living with a man and um, he was pushing for me to get sober. His mom had just passed and he was drinking with me. So I kind of tried to bring him into my world and he had had a dream. His mom came to him and um, basically spoke to him for him to remember who he was and just to stop, the, stop his life the way he was leading it. He woke up and told me about his dream and told me that I either need to leave or I need to stop drinking. I need to get right, get a job, and, and just push to be normal. I didn't want to lose this person from my life and I didn't want to be on the street again either. So I, I pushed to be normal. I got a job and it was really, really hard for me. Every day without, an, without a drink, I was filled with anger, with rage, hatred for myself, memories from my past, just debilitating thoughts all the time. And every situation just felt like an enormous situation, like too grand for me to even tackle. Just normal situations in life that most people could get through. It felt like the world just crashing down on me and I couldn't handle it. I did that for about six months and then that's it. I, I had had it. I bought a bunch of alcohol and it was my day off of work and I spent I want to say at least two hours praying while drinking I had a heart-to-heart -heart with God and I told him exactly how I felt and I told him if you're really real if you really love me if everything I went through is not lived in vain or I don't know what reason you still have me here and you haven't taken my life already then you need to come down here. You need to come down here and save me. That's how I felt. And I was angry and I was just basically going off like, God, you need to come. You need to come and you need to rescue me because I'm tired. I can't do this life. I live paycheck to paycheck and I get nowhere. I'm just, I feel like nothing and everything is just weighing me down. I don't even know why I got dressed up, but I did. I put makeup on and everything and I put on my favorite outfit. I got on the bus and I got out and I stood at the top of the wash. And I remember this, even though I was drunk, I remember standing at the top of the wash, closing my eyes and just saying, F it. And I dove. When I woke up, I was in ICU and I just remember fighting with the nurse. A few weeks later, I remember being down into the regular part of the uh, hospital and a psychiatrist had come in to see me. And one thing really stuck out to me. When I was telling him my whole life story, I was just unloading and telling him everything. And he just looked at me and he said, all the things that you've been through and all the people that have hurt you, why would you do this to you? And I remember I was looking down at my thumb and it was all puffed out because 
it had split open on impact. And I remember just looking at myself and thinking, geez, why would I do that to me? All the cutting on my arm. I used to cut my legs. I have cutting just everywhere, all over my body. I used to just cut myself. And it, it never dawned on me like that. Like, why, why would I hate on me instead of love on me? And it just made me cry. When I was released from the hospital, I remember being wheelchaired into my room and being so thankful. So thankful that I had somewhere to be. So thankful that, you know, the Lord saved me. That I only was looking at three months in my wheelchair and I could still walk. And then my heart was broken again at another thought. God came. God must really love me so much that he really did show up. I feel like he stuck his hand out and broke my fall. My pelvis is broken half. I fractured my clavicle and my L1 to my L3 vertebrae. But I'm alive and I can walk. I can run. I can go to work. I can do all these things. But I still wasn't whole. I still wasn't a full person just yet. I wanted to hide from the world. After I got better, I did go back to work. And I was just afraid. I was afraid of going outside and being confronted with alcohol. I was afraid of seeing friends because I would just the want to maybe wanting to drink again and to take myself there back to that spot where I was. I didn't pray yet not be in my word. I wasn't doing any of those things. So I was still just lost and scared. And I remember I was just searching and searching and I finally met a church that I could call my own. I saw them eating at um, the food court where I work. And um, I went up to them and I asked them, you know, like at first I had asked them if they were my friend's church. And they said, no, we're, we go to church here at uh, Resolution Ministry Church. And ever since I had start, when I started going there, and ever since that day, I've been filled with so much happiness, so much contentment, so much joy that it's, it's unreal. I remember a time when, when it just, it hurt to just be. It hurt to just remember. It hurt to just know that I'm living this life and just forever, it's ongoing and ongoing and problems are never gonna stop. And I remember just how suffocating it felt. And the more and more they loved on me, the more and more they that we praised and worshiped and, and just the way my pastor handles church is so different. So different from other churches because he had, he takes the time for, for me, for everybody in this church, for all of us. And, you know, I remember being there only a few days and uh, right away he was like, go up there and, you know, go ahead and tell your, your testimony. And I was nervous and scared. And I remember shaking because now I'm going to tell people that I know are normal. Like once they know about me, are they going to, are they going to just just cringe and want to run away and just think I'm so disgusting. And so I didn't say everything, but I said some. And they just kept on, just hug me. They just hug me, kiss me on my cheek and ask me to come back. And when I don't show up, they text. And it doesn't feel like I go to church. It feels like I'm going to my relative's house. It feels like I'm going to my cousin's house and we're hanging out with family and this togetherness and this happiness. I feel like I get therapy here. When I'm in my word and I, I, I sing, and I sing horrible, but my present praise and worship at my house by myself, I'm on my elliptical machine because it hurts for me to run because I have metal in my hips. And I just go off and I sing with God and I feel so overjoyed 
and I come to church and my pastor just preaches and he tells me, you know, like your problems aren't your problems. They're the Lord's problems. You give it to him, give it to him. And I just hear it and I take it in and I go home and I do my praise and worship and I tried it. I said, God, I, I lift this up to you now, Lord. I lift up my molestation to you, Lord. I lift up the time that I was raped to you, Heavenly Father. I lift up the fact that I make very little money and I need, I need ends to meet, Lord. I need you to help me see you in me when I look in the mirror, Lord. I need you to just feel, feel all these empty holes because I'm full of just this emptiness. I just need you to just come in and repair it. And the more and more I ask the Lord to do this, he did and he has. And it, it's kind of astonishing to me because I, I recall a time when I went to work and a coworker had, had told me, you know, it's really annoying how nice you are to the customers. And it made me laugh inside because I remember when I hated people, I just loathed people just because they were irritating, they had more than me, they were happier than me. They just seemed to be so content in their own skin. And the fact that someone told me, God, you're so nice to people, was like, wow. God really, God's really real. He can take somebody so broken and so lost and make them this happy, loving, giving person. And uh, I'm just grateful and I'm thankful. I just wanna, I wanted to share this because I wanted to show the power of God. I'm gonna share pictures also with this testimony so you can see the damage that I did to myself. I was very, very low and I literally wasted my whole life drinking and being on the streets and thinking that I was a nobody and that no one was ever gonna love me and I was never gonna be good enough to be a normal person's friend, somebody with an education somebody who had a house and a car like that could never be my friend because I'm a piece of trash and I belong in the gutter and that's not true because I actually have friends with master's degrees and the fact that they're my friends just trips me out because like how did I get here and then I just reflect on just God's mercy and God's love and I just want to say a quick prayer before I before I end this. Father God, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for having your hand on me my entire life. Even when I was homeless, Lord, it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse than what I had it. I want to lift up everyone who's hurting Heavenly Father to just lift them up to you, Lord. Anybody who has suicidal thoughts, Lord, Anybody who cuts themselves, I didn't mention this, but you've delivered me from bulimia, Heavenly Father. Anybody with all these self-loathing thoughts, Lord, I lift them up to you. I lift them up to you and I ask, Lord, that you just surround them with ministering angels. Ministering angels that just whisper and sing beautiful thoughts into their minds, beautiful thoughts into their ears, Heavenly Father, so that they can get away from their sails their negative self-talk and that inner dialogue that is so, so loud and so overpowering, Heavenly Father. I ask that, that I just continue each and every day to give my life to you, Lord, and I do. I did today, I will tonight, every moment of every day, I give myself to you, Heavenly Father. And I pray that anyone hearing this, Heavenly Father, that something, something inside them, even if it's just curiosity, if you're real, to just test you, to reach out and to call to you, Heavenly Father, because I know that once they do, you listen. You listen, you come, and you show up, just like you showed up for me, Lord. I want to give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord. Amen, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, and I thank you guys for listening. God bless you.